so as to, to retract it out. Where do you say to the Often, we don't need to repair the, the rotator cuff. We even will see across because it's very stable. So, I think it's high time uh, in our country to have a bomb bank, at least in your hospital, so we need anywhere. Because we have many, 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 many needs, uh, many cases needed uh, for bomb up. And we have, we have uh, many head cuts in Bipolar, many head cuts in, uh, in uh, total knee replacement, and many cuts in, in uh, total knee replacement. So it's high time to have or bomb bank, and case in any public hospital or private building or something like that. Uh, this is comment to uh, Mr. Shah. I think uh, yeah, all of our colleagues, we, yeah, we, we, we agree with this. Yeah. My question to uh, Professor Yun. Uh, any criteria for, for using MIS for, uh, uh, for MIS? I think MIS is not applicable in our cases here in Sudan. Because many of our patients uh, coming late, to you with advanced OA, with, 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 with many things. So uh, I think it's difficult to apply uh, to see an MIS in our case. Thank you very much. Yes, I have I, uh, my hand and stabilums uh, in severe disruptive hips. It's very difficult to do MIS surgery. Anyway, if you know the uh, uh, like MIS surgical technique and you could prepare that for instruments, so still we can decrease the NGO of normal issues. For example, in a really obese patients, you can run into a twin cell surgery. Like uh, you need a little bit more bigger than you see in obese patients. But still, even now, uh, when you do a primary, like a one instance a surgery, you still need a bigger than you see in obese patients. But uh, if you know the, uh, if you have the instruments, you know the uh, circle technique, then I believe you can decrease, still decrease the uh, sequence and also the uh, aging of soft tissues. So, uh, learning the surgical techniques of uh, you know, this surgery is really important for uh, like, uh, having good results. But anyway, uh, in my uh, experience about uh, primary plus plastic with the like, uh, uh, plasma female anatomy, it's like a normal patient with uh, osteoarthritis or mild degree of the plasma electron across patients, then I do a uh, Almost 99% I do with the two instant technique. Yeah. But if there is a really severe deformed like uh, uh, anatomical deformity, then I prefer to use uh, conventional surgery or one instant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
outcome of simultaneous bilateral TKR. At once, he was also latest as associated with significance the articular deformities such as bias, bias, and expedition deformities. These deformities are associated with bone loss, ligaments, laxity, and shortening. Neoxoplasty is supposed to correct this deformity. However, the significant deformities operation become more difficult. Why we do bilateral TKR? A patient with bilateral severe pain and significant deformities will not benefit fully from unilateral TKR because rehabilitation is difficult. The deformity may require is a corrected knee. As you can see, patient with severe problems and fixation deformities. After you have to use a straight knee after the replacement, will with a muscle knee deformity will request the deformity is a corrected knee. And this is all uh, I'm going to present the result of our patient who has simultaneous bilateral TKR on Shardani Hospital. Simultaneous bilateral TKR thickness. As you can see, when closes and the also is stopped. Operative procedures. Uh, standard tibial procedures done by senior surgeons at Sheridan Hill Hospital. All these patients are under spinal anesthesia except one time under general anesthesia. Tornigate, fast-applied and protein, closure of paravatelder and skin. And the uh, pain relieved cocktail was infiltrated and uh, radical was included morphine, morphine and transexamic acid. Uh, Drain was used because it's bilateral. Uh, but it's a prospective observation of hospital case to study. Uh, the population presents with bilateral severe knee osteoarthritis, and some patients with a knee osteoarthritis present late, and there is an obvious reason uh, that patients come late, uh, it uh, includes uh, late regret and economic constraint. A period of study uh, from October 2016 up to 2017, number of patients for the patients. How we assess the patients? We assess the operative knee score, of support knee score, and hospital escape, the operative time and patient satisfaction score, a rate of complication in the operative and post operative complication, a rate of transfusions. Also, we assess the post operative knee scores. criteria, all patients we are seeing in clinic with advanced bilateral primary neosorosalitis, patient is in a matoid arthritis was included in this study. Exclusion criteria, patient with revision knee surgery and patient with previous trauma, patient with any previous knee surgery or fixation, and patient with PMI more than 75. Result? Uh, Main age 61 uh, to 70 years old. Female slightly predominant and male. According to American Society of Anesthesiologists, 23 patients are killed, 20 is one. More patients are killed, one. Time of operations range 3 to 3 and a half hours. Post-operative oxygen support knee score, 97% of patients assist by oxygen support knee score shows that they are very satisfied. None of our patients are receiving intraoperative blood transfusion. Only two patients were transfused post-operatively due to hemoglobin and 9. No complications intraoperatively. <coughs> One patient develops superficial infections, which were on one sided, was deleted and improved. The 
The majority of patients stay in hospital between four to six days. Only one patient stay for 10 days due to medical treatment. 90% of our patients say is a very satisfied from patient point of view. Conclusion, the advance of having simultaneous procedures is an only one surgical event, single city with duration less than three hours over or shorter hospital stay and procedure cost is effective, patient confidence is good, no evidence of increased DVT and no evidence of increased uh, infections, no evidence of intraoperative blood transfusion. Superficial infection in one patient on one side in surgical room. Uh, this procedure is not available to every patient with problem in post need. Only patients in a good health condition are appropriate candidates. Special emphasis should be made for proper patient selection. With adequate assessment and good post-operative care, this procedure can be performed safely. Now I will go through some complication discussion that will come with simultaneous TKR. Procedure is less, hospital is less, less is not on the end, hospital is not. Thank you, I will tell you that's a great appreciation for our department session and the training session. Uh, 
a patient you've given the replacement to, but the demand is out there and the population is getting younger and you have to think down the line about whether you're going to have uh, further revision, uh, early revision for such people because of uh, their, uh, their usage is, is, is higher. So here you have to really think about your component alignment um, as it's <coughs> proper component alignments uh, leads to longevity. But again, you go through your sampling and placements in this instance, that's the initial delivery guide, and that's your extra delivery uh, uh, guide to predict to your KBA, predicting to your ankles. That's where you attach your uh, uh, cutting blocks for your femur. And again, very successful uh, operation, good outcome. However, every now and again, you might find this post-operatively an x-ray that you're not really proud of. So what do we do with, uh, at that stage? What is our quest for excellence at that, uh, at that stage? Is to avoid, avoid surprises such as these. And what do we turn to? We turn to technology. Going back to the footsteps of our forefathers, this is Sir Robert Jones. More than 100 years ago, he embraced the uh, state-of-the-art technology of that age. That was the x-ray machine, only invented a year before that. A year later on, he uses the x-ray machine, integrates it into the practice of orthopedics, and it's established, and it's set, really set the foundation for modern orthopedics. So we went to a quest of our own technology, and, and it is our nature as orthopedic surgeons to embrace technology and include it into, uh, into our practice. So we went about and embarked on our quest for excellence using navigation. <coughs> How the navigation system works, we have these two passive markers that are attached to the tibia and the femur respectively, and these reflect your infrared uh, light uh, which, uh, from your navigation device, which creates a field. Now you have two rigid bodies from which you can establish a field, and the 3D image is uh, simulated uh, in, in, in your screen. And from there on, as in this instance, you can see uh, Mr. Rice here uh, getting busy. You have your two uh, passive markers fixed in your tibia and your femur. The field is attached. Over here, this is the third uh, marker that acts as a pointer. And over here, it's uh, during our, uh, our femoral blocks. Once we've established that in your field, this is what you see in your screen. You can compute your mechanical uh, axis over here. Sorry, the center of rotation of your hip is defined, and you do that using a rotating maneuver. Following that, you can you can see where your tibial uh, resection is going to be, how far away from the joint line your varus and valgus uh, uh, alignments are accurate to degree. You can even uh, measure your uh, your anterior and posterior slopes. When it comes to soft tissue balancing and gap management, you you can aim, you have a, a number that can give you a, a good idea on, on, on what your gap balance is. You, we, we, we all don't like uh, notching our anterior cortex, so you can have an accurate guide of what your and what your op optimal anterior cortex is, and a good uh, guide of what your implant size is going to be. But of all, this is what we uh, what we found very beneficial is when it came to doing our femoral cuts in the transverse plane. You no longer have to estimate your uh, transit on the lateral axis. You don't have to guess where your white side line is, uh, and you can decide on the degree of your uh, rotation. And all the time, you can find in the, in the instance what your flexion gap is going to be uh, be like in flexion. So. The guessing is, 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 is out of the game. You have accurate figures straight ahead. And before committing ourselves to our cuts uh, and committing ourselves to uh, placing our components, we have a, a projection of an image of what our final outcome is going to be. So what we did is that we had 32 consecutive navigating cases. We only started using these uh, about, a year, uh, about a year ago. But we, and they say 30 is the magic number. It's after 30 where your learning curve is, you're more confident and you're more proficient. So we wanted to step back and have a look at how we were doing. So we compared our 32 consecutive navigated knee replacements and we compared those to what we previously used to do, our last 32 instrumented knee replacements using standard picks. Uh, it's worthy to say that our first navigated knee replacements were excluded from this study. Those were done in, uh, in uh, you know, more teaching uh, and educational settings. So we took our time doing, uh, doing this. 
First thing we all want to know, how long is this going to take us? <laughs> how our operative time has increased? Well, yes, our operative time, time has increased with a mean increase of about 12, uh, using, measuring the 20K time, you have 12 minutes in our 20K time. If you allow for a single outlier, though, that's the knee replacement. You really don't want to be doing a patient with a high BMI with a deformed knee, and you know that you're in for a long day. If you allow for that, I'd say our mean increase would probably be around the area of 10 minutes. We measured uh, our alignment in the coronal plane in standard post-operative x-rays. That was the easiest, uh, the easiest outcome to measure. We didn't find that much of a difference. Our alignments in the, in the group of the standard instrumented knee replacements and the navigated knee replacements, our alignments were only to about two degrees uh, within Paris or, or, or about this. So we weren't, thankfully, we were good enough doing standard knee replacements and, and uh, with instrumented knee, uh, navigated knee replacements were uh, not bad as well. But this is what we found interesting. During the intraoperative setting, the projection of the image, the alignment that we got over there, is strongly correlated with our post-operative x-rays. Hence, no more surprises. What you see during the intraoperative setting is, is a good projection of what your final x-ray is going to be like. So in conclusion, we found that converting to navigated knee replacements didn't, uh, isn't, isn't a, such a big burden. It wasn't difficult to achieve that, to learn. Our coronal alignment is comparable to what we previously used to do. More importantly, we found that we achieved more control in the intraoperative setting to predict our postoperative uh, alignments. And the way the fu uh, future is shaping up, it seems that robotics uh, are the future in orthopedic surgery, and we feel that uh, navigation is, uh, is is setting the uh, uh, foundation, really, or or or, or will play an integral part in this in this paradigm shift. In um, as I mentioned, I work in a beautiful part of Ireland, uh, uh, Kerry, if you're ever visiting, we're not all about uh, our quest of excellence, it's not all about new replacements. Sometimes uh, the quest of excellence is a 20 minute drive where you can enjoy beautiful sceneries uh, like this out by the coast, the lakes, and with a bit of green and cloud. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to talk about a uh, subject which I've been waiting for for quite a while. Uh, it is the National uh, Joint Register of Sudan. Uh, I've been discussing this throughout the previous uh, conferences with my colleagues from UK. And I think it's time for us to start registering our joint replacement. Now, going back uh, in the history, the Swedish Joint Registry has established since 1975, and now they combine the Swedish to the Scandinavian uh, Joint Registry. The registry makes the benchmark for all the registries that follow, and everybody in Europe awaits the annual report of the Swedish uh, Joint Registry to see the performance of the implants. UK, uh, the register is established later than the Swedish registry, and it was set up by the Department of Health and the Welsh Government in 2002. Northern Ireland joined in 2013, and the Isle of Man joined in 2015. Uh, I don't know about the Irish history, but I think it was established in 2013, 2014. The Egyptians, I think our friend, uh, Professor Mahmoud Hafiz, has started some registration in his hospital, 6th of October. And I have seen the Pakistani registry start in 2015. I think the Australian is also established. Now, why do we uh, register our uh, joints? Now, the main aim is to improve the care of the patients who have joint replacement or who are having joint replacement in the future. That's the main aim. Now, why do we have to register our patients? Now, the idea is to collect information on all hips, 
and knees, revision hip and revision knee, and probably including the uh, hemorrhoid as well. Now later on we can add to the registry all the trauma cases. So what, what's the aim? The main issue is to monitor the performance of different types of implants. And secondarily, is to assess the effectiveness of different types of surgical procedures and selection of the implant itself. As you can see, some implants get broken and some implants are really not suitable for implantation of human beings. Now, uh, who will benefit from this? The patients will benefit, the clinicians will benefit, and the obstetric sector as a whole will benefit whether they are, they are companies or manufacturers. And at the end of reporting on the registry, we will put guidelines and protocols on joint placement. In Sudan, I mean, 10 years ago, as Mr. Uh, Mohammed Said has said, 10 years ago there were only a few public surgeons in Sudan, how the number is increasing, and I think we are about 131 public surgeons now. Many of us now are doing total knee replacement and total hip replacement, and the number of companies bringing in implants is increasing. There used to be only three companies, now they are almost 14 and the number is increasing and the implants are coming from different countries including America, USA, Brazil, uh, UK and so on. So we have different sources of implants. Many hospitals are sharing and doing total uh, joint replacement but the majority are private hospitals. Now, uh, we really, we, we don't know how much joint replacement we have done in the last 12 months in Sudan. This is a rough idea about the total needs done in Sudan last year, not just some shakanils, all Sudan, or all Khartoum actually, uh, Colintec, Zimmer, White Medical and Cohesion, Link and Euros, approximately, 1,000 joints last year, total knee replacement. But we don't know how did these knees behave. We don't know how much uh, failed. We don't know the mode of failure of these joints. And this is why we have to register them. So what have we done and what we are supposed to do next? We have designed this form, which is uh, actually similar to the UK National Register form, but we combine the primary, complex primary, and the division in one form. And we have implemented this in our hospital at the present time. So what we are planning in 2018 to include all the joints is collaboration with our colleagues. What we did, we appointed an arthroplasty specialist nurse, which deal with all the patients with arthroplasty, and she cared for them. She have a telephone number where she, they can contact her directly, and she can follow them uh, regularly. Later on, we are planning to do uh, what we call an outreach team, which includes the arthroplasty nurse, a physiotherapist, and an assistant physiotherapist, which will follow the patient even at home. Uh, this is the knee registry form, which is not difficult to fill actually. It can be filled by the registrar or uh, the arthroplastinaires. Uh, who is responsible of this registry? Now, 
We know in the UK the government is responsible of it. But I think it has to be completed and it will be online from January this year, uh, next year. And we have to report and analyze the data regularly, annually. There is also cost involved in making these registries. We need some manpower and we need a collaboration of some NGOs and implant companies to deal with these registries. Uh, I think we are on making now uh, an alpha plus society which includes all the surgeons who uh, deal with joint replacement and we do not expect any governmental support. Government is busy with something else. As usual. In summary, it is high time now uh, to introduce Sudan Joint uh, Registry. Uh, with some collaboration, I think we'll succeed. And uh, we will be one of the few countries in the Middle East and Africa which have national joint register. Thank you very much. That was uh, 15 years ago, not 10 years that uh, I mentioned by Mr. Uh, that 17 years ago at the uh, hospital in the police hospital for the Sahirun uh, private group which is affiliated with the police hospital at that time. We, we, we sometimes do uh, simultaneous bilateral group, me and Dr. Mamoun Kamsheva, but we, we gave up that practice. So it, more cost effective and uh, less uh, see hospital stay and uh, all these uh, advantages because it's known that when we went through the literature that uh, uh, the complication is more when you do simultaneous or uh, we, we used to do if we, if we want to do a bilateral totally we do the, the one phrase and then after three days we do the other the total time of stay is about a DPT is more common when you do that. Yeah. That's more common question. Otherwise, that second question is for the person. I don't know about that. We will have experience in doing also bilateral joint Simultaneous all. Thank you very much. There is two ways to do uh, total knee replacement on the same patient. It's simultaneous on the same day and staged and, you know, as you said, three days, seven days, <coughs> or so. But, I mean, as Professor uh, mentioned, proper patient selection is most important. That's number one. Number two, I don't think a stage in three days or seven days is good for the patient because the inflammatory markers will be already high. I don't know whether the floor is agree with me or not. I think it is, it is dangerous to do uh, in three days or seven days. You have to stay in six weeks or do them on the same day. Do you agree? Yes. Applications. In 40 cases, just one patient. Uh, we have developed two efficient patients on one side. Uh, no, no risk of uh, DVD in 40 cases. Yeah. 
So you have to choose your patient properly. You have to uh, look at the comorbidity, uh, and you have to look at your outcome uh, carefully. Uh, what you're doing is uh, well established. You're choosing your patient well, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It can be done, I will not call it simultaneous. I, I call it one second uh, near replacement. Uh, the uh, continue talking about the uh, National Joint Registry. Congratulations for doing this. There are challenges, we all know it. The challenges in my hospital uh, is the data. Uh, inputting the data is very important, and you have to have a dedicated person to input the data. It's still in England, We've been doing this for God knows how many years. Uh, there is uh, so many people who do not input the data correctly, and that will affect the outcome. Uh, and again, uh, the joint registry is not only to look at the processes, it is to look at us, service, and our performance, and you have to be honest about that. It looks at, at our performance to make sure that we are performing uh, properly. Uh, thank you for doing, uh, for, for doing this. Uh, Shut off and a new group and a national joint history is one way of improving our performance and improving uh, what we do for our patients. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the president of the association in the UK is requesting people to fill the forms regularly. Thank you. Okay. It's uh, also regarding the national joint history. This is really great, very healthy. I just noticed you're starting with the hip and knee because maybe this is a common practice. Uh, we're regretting that uh, in UK. We're starting doing now the shoulder and elbow only for the last three or four years. I think if you are going to do the effort now, my suggestion maybe if we can include at least the shoulder, uh, because I understand that quite a, a colleagues are starting doing that here now. It's easy to start now rather than later. Obviously, as you know, in the British one, we just now they added the ankle and uh, uh, foot and ankle, and then they added the elbow. So, uh, congratulations again. How did you yes, uh, sorry, but we tried to do, do it again, but uh, should we jump about and also should have a plan for the continuous research project? Yeah. Bilateral replacement. It is easy to for the patient to have bilateral rather than one and then later on to have another one. It is a good experience for them. Rehabilitation will be easy and uh, gait is easier than to have one leg is direct inflection for the other. So from rehabilitation aspect I think bilateral is easier for the patient. Uh, for tonight uh, the gala dinner there will be about uh, at seven here enough. All are welcome. My question to Dr. Jaffa. Uh, yes, uh, I'm glad uh, I'm good. I think the training of uh, of an uh, uh, that he has uh, <coughs> the entire uh, experience. Uh, my comment, I have a, a comment about uh, this call, simultaneous, sequential, staggered. Simultaneous near the same time. I think it's good for uh, severe deformity or financial illness. Concerning the person of uh, Sudanese uh, history, today I want to congratulate for this uh, effort. But uh, forming the Astroblad Society is the baseline for this. And to be activated society, I think this is the base, not to be like the football society, the fairest in Africa can be later on. Why is the navigation uh, comes along with the cost of the uh, of the instrument set, so it's included in the uh, I think it's in fact uh, cheaper than our previous uh, uh, standard instrument uh, in the kind of case of that. Um, in, 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 in an aspect of training, it, it gives you a different perspective as, as a training, uh, uh, as a training. When you have your instrument, the jigs, you're really following what the, what the, what the jig uh, tells you in terms of your alignment and your, and your rotation. But with the navigation, you certainly have more control. And that part of the increased operative time is really spent with you deciding what way you want your implant and, 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 and which way you want your, your soft tissue balancing. So overall, I think 
from a teaching perspective, it's, it certainly includes your experience with the uh, investment system. Okay. We are doing a randomized uh, controlled uh, study trial between uh, uh, standard knee replacements and, uh, and, uh, and navigation knee replacements. Yeah. Try to look at, 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 at uh, long term uh, outcomes, but at the time you have mostly switched uh, to uh, navigation. Well, let me give this some sort of separation, and the Bogotius tendon is here, it's okay because this is important. Do you need to reconstruct it or not? If it's okay and heavy, I'm just pushing the Bogotius tendon, it's okay. And this is the lateral meniscus. The ACL is intact here with this patient. Then I go posterior. I go see this is a posteromedial portal. It's very important to do this posteromedial portal. And here, this is a capsule. The gluteal artery is very near to you. It's just separating uh, it, you from the capsule. The capsule is just separating it. This is the stump. Always it's better to go always anterior to the stump. But I'm sure I am in the tibia. Then I put the seat guide. It's, you put it lower down on one centimeter. And I use the image intensifier always. This is the guide pin. Then I start drilling. Always there is an image intensifier. Always I use image intensifier. Then I, this is the uh, where I just hold it and then I hold this way and, 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 and it will guide my graph later on. Or another way, I just the wear, I guide the wear very posteriorly, and I just take it with an, a grasper. And this needs assistance. This is a posteromedial bottle here. This is the grasper. This, I'm using three bottles, and there's an assistant for me uh, taking the tissues away from me. Here, exactly not like the ACL. In the PCL, in the ACL, when uh, I usually using as is low, I just take the scope out and I'm pushing my SEL graft. Here, you need, whenever you are pushing or passing your graft, you need to see your graft. So because sometimes it's keen in the killing angle here, you need to assist it so as to get it or to get it passed away the, uh, the, the, the tunnel, the tibial tunnel. I'm seeing it in the BCL. The graft is being pushed. Um, it's passing the tibial tenin. Now I, am, I need to pass the femoral tenin. Sometimes you need to use an instrument, especially the trocar. I use it to pull the, the graft so as to pass. This is after the reconstruction. This is the ACL. The reconstructed S, this is an SL, it's not a reconstructed, or credit the patients having SL, and this is the reconstructed PCL, and you have a triangle here. Always you need to have this triangle. And the PCL, and if it goes, it goes in the medial femoral condyle for, for a while. So this is a triangle, it's very important. To keep this triangle, this is another patient, this is the ACL is intact, and this is the reconstructed BCL here. Yes, this is the and this is the, the triangle here. This is the first patient having an ACL and BCL injury, and this is the patient after three years coming to me. Although there is a medial side problem, he needs an immediate collateral ligament reconstruction, but he's a farmer. He said to me, I will not come back again to do any surgery. I have a lot of wear. His medial, I just repair the medial side because it's acute. I don't reconstruct the medial collateral ligament. This patient, I think, needs an immediate collateral ligament. This is a patient after three years. This is another patient, a Yemenian uh, patient. This is after.
after the reconstruction, this is uh, one week after uh, 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 the surgery. This is another patient. There is a problem regarding this patient's score, so I just used a two incision to help me. This is after the reconstruction. This is the patient with the postrolateral coronary. This is just after surgery. And this is two weeks after surgery. I reconstruct the uh, lateral collateral ligament. And this is a patient after one month. He went to the core and he's happy. Staying home message that identification and treatment of all pathology when regarding this area is very important. History and examination are crucial. Do you need to reconstruct or not? The other thing, the strong graft material is very important because here you have what is called the killing angle. If you don't have a strong graft, you, uh, the graft may fail and tension in the graft is very important using primary and backup. Many times I use a backup, I use a, 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 a screw and also I use a button. So as you have uh, a primary and backup uh, fixation and post-operative rehabilitation is so crucial. Alhamdulillah, thank you. Uh, paper uh, work in uh, Emory National Hospital. <coughs> Still there's a controversy regarding the time, uh, the best time to do an SL reconstruction as early on. In the literature, uh, we, we found that early surgical treatment may prevent the increased uh, instability and, of course, it reduces the risk of municipal and coronary damage. In other studies, uh, they found the results of acute uh, reconstruction was unbelievable due to the problems of the sensitive range of motion, the pain, and the health of fibrosis. Um, um, in certain uh, Authors they recommended uh, the reconstruction at least uh, three weeks after the injury. Few studies, however, commented on the outcome of uh, late uh, reconstruction, uh, like this uh, study by uh, from the researchers Spock from Toledo and Anatoscopy. They compared the results of uh, reconstruction which were performed acutely versus the late uh, reconstruction in the competitive athletes. And they found in both groups there is no difference in the patient's subjective uh, evaluation. Um, the delay in all the uh, literature was, was due to the late referral of the patients to the surgeon, whether it's due to the referral from the GP or the other colleagues in other departments, or the prolonged waiting list in, in the hospital. So we put the objectives to evaluate the early function outcome of a patient treated with uh, delayed SL reconstruction. Uh, patient were, were diagnosed uh, based on history, uh, clinical examinations, and further confirmed by prime primary sign of ASL uh, option. We put, however, the um, data point for early versus delayed as uh, 12 months, although there is uh, much debate on the, on the terminology of early and the new terminology of acute nowadays, acute uh, ASL injury versus late versus delayed, or other terms, chronic one. Uh, it's a prospective bicentric study. Based, based on two hospitals. Uh, 30 cases were operated by a single surgeon followed up uh, in, uh, from May to uh, <coughs> November of this year. And the choice of graph was uh, quite a hamstring graph, single bond reconstruction, and fixation by two bio screws. Uh, we excluded the uh, multi ligament multi ligament injury, and uh, patients with less than six months of uh, injury, and patients with less than two months of follow up. That was collected using the uh, uh, lesion knee scoring system and analyzed by the SVSS. And the final for all the patients number dropped to 21 patients. And uh, this is a brief about the uh, lesion uh, functional score, in which uh, it all depends on the function outcome, like uh, the limp and the pain and the locking symptoms, stair, stair climbing, support and uh, swelling, and squatting. So with the results for with males and between the uh, between 17 and 37 years old, average is uh, all the mean is uh, 28.8, and the mean BMI was 27. Uh, the injured side was mainly the right side, and the uh, delay was surgery. 85% uh, of the patients were uh, have delayed more than one year, 
Um, post-operative, this is a finished uh, result. Post-operative deletion score, uh, the mean pre-operative deletion score came from uh, 67 to 87 post-operatively, and this change was statistically significant using the uh, KRT test. And the later surgery based functional outcome. The blue columns here represent the uh, patients who came uh, more than one year, and the red ones represent the patients who came uh, within the first year, or specifically from six months to 12 months. Within the group of uh, more than one year, 78% of them uh, had uh, uh, good, excellent uh, results. And uh, 21, 22 had uh, fair results. Um, this is an obvious uh, slide. Of course, any patient doing physiotherapy will have uh, good results by the end of the day. Good, excellent uh, in uh, uh, the group. They, they performed about 30, 31 uh, sessions of uh, physiotherapy. And the third group was 15 sessions. Um, this uh, slide, I think, is the most important one which summarizes uh, the two, two, two previous uh, uh, slides, which combine the delayed surgery and physiotherapy versus the post, uh, post-operative relation score. In the first column here, uh, the group of the good excellent, and the second column here is the fair group. In this row, we have the more than one year and the, within the first year. Most of these patients are pulled within the uh, within the good excellent and uh, most of them were, were after the first year. Um, this uh, comes to the uh, discussion that uh, I guess the same results uh, uh, after this discussion uh, to compare my results with other uh, authors. So in this uh, research we had 35 patients who returned to sporting activity and 37 rated their knee as being normal or nearly normal. Uh, concluded at the end of the day that this reconstruction does not adversely affect the outcome. Another um, uh, randomized control trial compared the acute versus um, subacute, and we found no difference in the outcome. The chronic group will have fewer patients with a normal with the knee present as normal. They also found a higher risk of miscarriage injuries in the chronic group. In all of the studies we, uh, we reviewed in the literature, uh, the patients were competitive athletes or high at high professional motivations. Our patients are non-professional young athletes. And the final follow-up of our patients, 81% uh, uh, had good excellent and fair group was 19, uh, 19%. We have no correlation between the functional outcome and the later surgery. We could achieve almost comparable function results with the international figures. Um, this, uh, despite a short follow-up follow -up and the uh, different techniques, of course, in the uh, in different literature. Um, we, we, we probably say that it, it's neither the graph choice or the fixation type which dictates the uh, functional outcome. Uh, most probably it's the anatomical ACL uh, reconstruction and fixation and the standard rehabilitation pro protocol. Uh, the strength of this uh, study, I, I believe it's uh, one technique and uh, one method of fixation. Um, Follow-up was done by an uh, independent observer and performed by a single surgeon. Of course, short period is a drawback for uh, this uh, study. I conclude that uh, delayed ACL reconstruction could give, uh, still give excellent results if anatomical ACL reconstruction was done and the patient is early for rehabilitation. Uh, ACL should be offered to lay presenters as a, as a significant uh, improvement in the knee function and satisfied, the patient satisfied with the results. I just want to show you certain uh, key steps, I believe, in the uh, ACL reconstruction. In the, in the past, we used to go for an oblique, uh, long, uh, five centimeters or four centimeters. But nowadays we shifted to a, trans um, a vertical two centimeters for hamstring the hands, hamstring grass. And um, although we have been trained for post uh, transporter as well as trans tibial, but we prefer the uh, transporter approach as it uh, gives you an easy access to the femoral uh, full footprint. The uh, blue, the blue uh, dot here representing the accessory uh, medial portal. Um, this is uh, just to show you the difference between trans tibial and the trans um, trans uh, portal. Uh, anatomically, that that means it's uh, more anatomic than the trans uh, portal approach. And uh, because when you are doing trans uh, portal approach, you are targeting specifically this area, what we call the bifurcated bridge. Almost, if you are doing a single, if you are single uh, single <coughs> bone uh, reconstruction, you go in the in the in the, in the middle in the bifurcated bridge. 
just below the uh, lateral intercondylar ridge. But if you are doing a double bundle, that means the anterior medial and posterior lateral, this uh, ridge will, uh, will be in the middle between the two bundles. Um, a brief video to uh, show you how to feel for the, this uh, ridge while intra interoperatively. You can feel nicely the uh, ridge here, and uh, almost there is a footprint for the previous uh, ACL. Uh, lastly, when you have done the uh, femoral uh, screwing, you tension the graft and you do the tibial screw at 20 degrees of the knee flexion. And uh, lastly, you go for the final steps is you go for hooking or uh, testing the integrity of the uh, ACL and double, all, always double checking. That means uh, you put your uh, you leg extension of the, of the knee to guard against any impediment, whether it's a roof impediment or lateral wall. Uh, impediment, which, is, which, uh, which will cause you failure later on. And thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> We know from the shoulder is a common problem in the shoulder, uh, usually characterized by pain and increasing, increases movement and limitation of range of motion and function. As physiotherapy, we have uh, a lot of modalities that treat from the shoulder, uh, like exercises and massage and, and deep heat and trunk resonance electrical nerve stimulation as it not tense. Ultrasound and laser and manual therapy techniques includes different types of mobilizations and mechanical technique and muscle energy technique and soft tissue manipulation. <coughs> About mobilization, uh, it's an application of basic movement for the treatment of the pain and stimulus synovial joint. Uh, we have a convex and concave in the mobilization for the linear joint. Uh, the humeral head will be the, con the convex and the glenoid fossa will be the concave. Most of the energy technique is a form of, uh, of soft tissue osteopathic manipulation techniques that include directed and controlled patient isometric contraction. Uh, summarized, uh, most of the energy technique directed and controlled patient isometric contraction designed to reduce pain and growth range of motion. My statement of the problem was is glenoid neuron mobilization or muscle or muscle neuro technique is, is better in treatment for the shoulder. So the purpose of the study was to compare between glenoid neuro mobilization and muscle neuro technique in the treatment of frozen shoulder. As we know, there is high incidence of frozen shoulder between two and five percent according to studies. Uh, Twenty to thirty percent are, are bilateral, and increase uh, to secondary frozen shoulder increase with uh, diabetes about 10 to 30 percent from cases, which caused long-term disability. My study was conducted in the Department of Physical Therapy at Police Hospital and the Patient Clinic of Physical Therapy at Faculty of Physical Therapy at the New University. I have three group, groups, said the subject was divided into three groups. Group A have 10 patients uh, for linear humor mobilization. Group B, muscle energy technique at the patient, and group C, control, control group. All patients had a total of eight, eight treatment sessions, two sessions per week for four weeks. My inclusion criteria include patients between 40 and 60 years. Uh, the bed, uh, uh, if the pain is affected the activities of daily living, and uh, the pain is persisted for at least 30 days and patient home with volunteers for the better in the story. At exclusion criteria, patient who had previous shoulder surgery, patient taking any muscle reduction or pain medi medication, and non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and patient with malignancy tumors, 
and patients who have neurological the symptoms which involve the upper extremities and the pregnant tumor. For evaluation, I used both the scale from 0 to 10 and cross the at the level of the brain. In the face of the limiter for the, for the most effective movement, I was reflection and abduction and external rotation. Cross this disability questionnaire was a 22 question, yes or no answer. For treatment, all group had traditional program which include a sarazam for 4 minutes, 4 minutes, 1 megahertz, continuous mode, intensity was 2, hold box for, for 15 minutes, posterior capsule stretch for 60 seconds, and 5 repetitions, common exercise program which include pandemic exercise and scapular mobilization. By scapular mobilization, I, I mean wall push up without bending the, the elbow. Glean river mobilization includes colder glides and traction and distraction. Anterior glide, an anterior glide position should, should be in wrong position and, and push the joint uh, inferiorly. Glean river and posterior glide position should be in sublime position and slight abduction for shoulder and flexion for elbow and then start the glide and the scapular mobilization. Each glide five times for a hold for 30 seconds. Most ordinary technique was included. Most ordinary technique for, fle for flexion on sublime position, for abduction on sitting position, for extended rotation and sublime position. A result is for, for each patient pre and post. This is the main, main result. A pain decreased from about 8 to 5 at, at group A in human mobilization. At most ordinary technique group, the significant improvement from 8 to 3. At group C, control group from 8 to about 6. Flexion increase in group A. And group B and Z and at all groups. Abduction tools that increase in all groups, group A and group B, more significant, and group C. External rotation for each patient are the main as the most effective movement increase in group A to and group B and group C. Functional disability questionnaire decrease on all groups of, but, but, but not, not, not uh, improvement was not significant at all groups. <coughs> was significant only in group B in pain and function and external rotation and external rotation in group C. But improvement in another parameter was not significant. I conclude that the cellular technique is more effective in decreasing pain and improving function and increasing the external rotation of shoulder in patients with frozen shoulder. My recommendation was to study the immediate effect of most energy technique in patients with frozen shoulder and to study the combined effect of glenic human mobilization and most energy technique in the treatment of frozen shoulder and I suggest Combined, combined effect will, will, will decrease the number of sessions, so it, it, will, it will decrease the duration of the treatment and the cost of treatment. The student, the efficacy of different types of mobilization or muscle energy technique and the treatment of other osteopathic disorders, like osteoarthritis, but the femoral pain syndrome, or sur and cervical or lumbar pain. Research should required to determine the long-term effect of muscle energy technique and the treatment of frozen shoulder. This was short term effect, and research should be conducted to compare between muscle energy technique and other manual therapy techniques like medical mobilization and metal mobilization technique. And then I would like to thank my colleagues and special thanks to Mr. Simon Nibbala for his support during my research. Thank you. Uh, today I'm happy to present my study for Philip. The clinical guide practice and the graphic study of normal AC joint morphology in Sudanese population. Uh, from the start
start, uh, me is Khaled, I'm the staff for Speeding Safety. I'm um, working in the Department of Anatomy, National Report University. Uh, welcome my, uh, our guest to our beautiful city of Uh Today we are going about uh, this content and overview to uh, concerns, the study objective, methods and results and discussions. What about data home message and future recommendations? Uh, from the start we are going to have an overview. Chronic lamicular joint is an plane and serial variety of the synovial joint. A chronic lamicular joint can cause localized pain and high heart dysfunction. The incidence of the primary abscesses of the chronic lamicular joint in the general population is reported as high as 82% in asymptomatic subjects. A chronic lamicular joint accounts approximately uh, save to 1% of the patient with a painful shoulder. And a chronic lamicular joint secondary to the degenerative change, a uh, chronic lamicular joint pain secondary to degenerative change are associated with protective impingement, often requires surgical intervention. Uh, by all, by reviewing all this literature, we consider about the chronic lamicular joint shape and space as important part. Which to be considered we are going throughout the literature. We have a chronic lamicular joint studies in America by Zhang, and we have it by Marister in Ottawa, also in America, and we have by Cornet Stone. It had, in London, they have two studies in 2010 and 2014. As we see, these studies, all these studies, is concerned with the race in the North American and Western Europe. No further studies done in region of Asia or Africa. This is our present study in 2017. Okay. By reviewing this literature, we found that the chronic lamicular joint space in 1943 is from 1 to 3 millimeters. This is a study done by Zhang and Di Palma. Uh, but the problem of this study, they didn't compare about difference in gender and didn't compare about the different age groups. Further studies done till we reach uh, 1997. This is a study confirmed that the chronic lamicular space is increased and the normal range will become from 3 to 8 millimeters. We can see that on the different generations we can see different measurements. That is concerned when we have in 2017 and what we have about different races and about the gender. This implies our aim and objective. The aim of this study is was to evaluate radiologically the normal chronic lamicular morphological anatomy among the Sudanese population, and we are further interested to find out the prevalence of the chronic lamicular joint types, and we are going to examine the similarity <coughs> of the chronic lamicular joint shape and space on each side. And we are also interested to measure the normal chronic lamicular joint introducing a new innovative method using three point and correlate this finding with group and gender. So, what is the methods? The method we use is a descriptive retrospective analytic study. We are concerning about 200 normal acromic lamicular x-rays with AB view focused on acromic lamicular joint is prone to 100 subjects, 55 percent of them for were males and 45 percent were females. The group will range from 18 to 70 with an average to box three. Okay. Well, we are going to classify the acromic lamicular joint depending on observing the acromial end and clavicular end of the joint. And we are going to measure the chronic lamicular points in the proximal, middle, and distal point, and we are introducing also the longitudinal distance. And to calculate the integral joint space from all these parts. Okay. Our results for discussions. We are modifying the chronic lamicular joint classifier by Colgate et al. to find that we have these nine classifications. We have flat, flat, and we have care oblique. The area of articulation within 
the joint, as we know, it is a small area. Whereas the load transmitted through this joint is great, the arrangement produces high stress through the joint and load transmit across the blood or cave joint will be uniform. But when, when we talk about the oblique one, we will find that they are high stress at the specific articular points. And that promotes the evolution of the degenerative change will be more in this studies, in this uh, type of chart. You can see this is a flat flat type, this is oblique flat type, for example, and this is a cave oblique type. This is the distribution of the chronoclavicular joint type according to the study group. We are found in the Sudanese population, the flat cave type is the most common one, followed by the flat flat type, and the least one is the cave oblique type. We are going to practice this now. We can see here in this photo, you can see the flat cave type, observing the acromion end and the clavicular end of the joint. And here also we can see the oblique cave type of the left AC joint. And this is for you. What do you think? Okay. Yes, this is a flat, flat type. This is a flat, flat type. So, the three point uh, technique we use it to measure of the acromion clavicular joint are going to measure the proximal end and the distal end. This was done at the retreat shop. They are going to measure the proximal end and distal end of the joint and calculate the integral space. We are introducing a new point that is mid uh, point distance. By introducing this point, we found a significant change in calculating the acromioclavicular joint space. This will be similar when it is identical as, with, as the hypothesis previously, oblique oblique or flat flat or curve curve, but when we talk about like this type, it will create difference. You can see this is the proximal end, this is the middle end, and this is the distal end. This is how we measure these three ends using the program of the X-ray. Yeah. Uh, here we can see the different measurement of the proximal distance and midpoint. Distance this is the mid, and this is the range from the minimum to the maximum. When we see the, uh, when we say When we focus here, this is a retreat measure. This is what using the retreat using the proximal end and distal end. The result will be 4.5. And when we use 3 point, the proximal distal and midpoint will change to 4.3. Comparing this result using an unpaired key test, we found significant change and the p value will 0.03. This will, this will indicate that using 3 point is more significant. On this graph, we can see clearly that the association of the acromioclavicular integral space and edge. This is the proximal distance and midpoint. And you can see this in five groups. Uh, it refers to the acromioclavicular joint, mid and middle, distal and midpoint. This is the longitudinal distance. This longitudinal distance we found it to be increased with advance in age. Up in this graph, we are going to compare between the gender, between the male and the finding in the male and the finding in the female. You can notice here, when we see it in the male, it's 4.4, and when we see it in the female, it's 3.9. When we compare this using ampere T test, we see significant P value. But on the other side, when we show it the, the difference between the right side and left side, we show this negative significant P value. From all this, what is the progress to be taken in our clinical practice? The plain x ray is a valuable tool. This is a simple, cheap way to evaluation of the acromioclavicular joint primarily. Acromioclavicular joint space are found to be wider in males and females. There is, was no difference in the time and distance associated with the right side and left side, and we can use easily once the patient complained from the left side to do the both sides, x-rays, and to have comparison. Measuring a chronoclavicular integral space using the three point is more accurate than using two point process. A chronoclavicular joint space decreases significantly with advancing in age except longitudinal length. 
distance which increases with rise in age. To wrap up our talk, the plain shoulder X-ray involving right and left acromioclavicular joint is a very unuseful investigation modality to diagnose acromioclavicular pathologies. Comparing a right and left side useful and valid muscle in detecting APC pathologies. Further recommendation: We recommend to do the three-point method overseas to be to do multiple center, uh, multiple center studies and to compare it using different modalities like CT and MRI. And the multiple center studies with symptomatic patients is also recommended. My last uh, talk before I go to the science. I will thanks uh, Dr. Kamal, my supervisor in this research, uh, the Dean of uh, Faculty of Rebound University, and I will see thank all my colleagues. Uh, being an anatomist is an important message. Anatomy is a language we can deal with it. Anatomy is the deepest way to be a safe center. Thank you. Tell you about the function of our cup of chronic anterior crochet geometry construction. This is the agenda for today. As we know, ACL is the most common type of uh, injury, sport injuries. So, uh, ACL deficient knee leads to secondary or meniscal injury and early osteoarthritis. This is due to the sliding of the bone in each other. Uh, composed of the ACL composed of anterior medial bone by the inflection and posterior lateral bonded by an extinction. Uh, for the uh, it's either a change of direction, pivoting, cutting, or this decelerating injury, and it can also happen in hyperextension injury. As I uh, mentioned before, by the weeks, uh, history and examination is very crucial, and uh, a specific, uh, specific examination of the knee, anterior drawers test, Lachman test, pivot shift test, and valgus and valgus stress test are uh, important. Uh, we start by a brain X-ray, AB a lateral view, and this may show evolution of deeper eminence and lateral, a lateral capsule. But the gold standard is MRI or for the knee to assess the two cruciate ligaments, the two collaterals, menisci and cartilage. So an injury to ACL can result in significant functional impairment. Torn ACL lead to recurrent attack of instability, damage to the meniscal and articular dark cartilage and may accelerate the progression of osteoarthritis in active individuals. The ID candidate for this uh, patients who perform activity requiring SAL, patients with associated, uh, with associated other knee injuries, and patients who has otherwise healthy knees. Uh, in this area, with, uh, concerning about the contraindication, I would like to stress about the speed and immature patients with stereotypical controversial. Uh, there are many techniques, uh, open, transtibial, uh, trans transportal, single arm versus uh, double bonded technique. And auto, uh, there are automatic autographs or uh, allographs like uh, mistering, uh, bone patellar tendon bone and quads. Uh, fixation devices are suspensory devices, interfaces, screws or others. So, 44 patients underwent ACL reconstruction using single bonded between June 2015 to June 2017 at Lee Hospital. The purpose of this study was to evaluate the functional outcome of reconstruction of ACL from an ACL with four strand hemisteric autograph. So out of 145 patients, 44 met our criteria with isolated ACL injury were included in this study. Pre-operative and post-operative function were assessed by national score and the follow-up period was two years. This is lifelong score, consists of eight questions. So these patients are isolated, ACL isolated here, plus or minus meniscal injury more than 18 years and chronicity more than six months. Concerning the procedure, we start by uh, examination under anesthesia, diagnostic arthroscopy, blood harvesting, then uh, femoral panel, femoral panel placement, tibial panel placement, the graft passage and fixation. So these patients, all of the patients are males, aged between 20 to 52. The right side is the most common, 50 to 56. Mode of trauma is the most, uh, the small injury is the most one, six, uh, 72. Road traffic accident is 22, fall down, four. Miniscale injury, 
associated with this uh, with this SCL is 77. Contrary damage was nine. The preoperative ratio of score, the mean property ratio of score was 63, which improved to 92 at the time of final evaluation. Nine, 29 cases had excellent result. Nine cases had good result, and uh, four cases had fair to had poor results. The average delay to the to the same day was 22 months. As we can see here, the majority of the patients falls between 20 to 30 years old. Both of the trauma, both dominant. Right side is affected the left and the left side. Very scale injury is common. This is the preoperative national score. Uh, this is the comparison between preoperative and postoperative. The preoperative is uh, 63, as I mentioned, are 9 amounted to postoperative. There is only one patient who has complications because he injured his knee. And in our study, the mean preoperative score was uh, 36, which is uh, less compared to the patient of Gita et al. and Javela, who reported observation of 60, 67 and uh, 69 respectively. And this could be the fact that our patient we can uh, accommodate, we are be diagnosed. This is why the national score is very low. Uh, our most operative physical score is 92, and this is the close proximity to the ball at the top. Uh, 90 of the cases reported that their knees are normal or near normal after the construction. Uh, our result is consistent with the pre-operative ulcers, indicating excellent restoration of anterior and rotatory stability of most patients. I will go through some publications here. This is a, a paper published by Donald Schilborn at uh, 1997. He concluded that uh, ACR reconstruction does not affect, does not compromise future tibial osteotomy or knee replacement. And this is paper published by Lou, 2012. He concluded that ACR reconstruction with hemispheric tendon may significantly reveal symptoms and uh, relieve symptoms and improve knee function in the patient with chronic anterior pressure ligament patient knee with osteoarthritis, especially in those with primary symptoms uh, of instability. So to conclude this, uh, isolated ACL reconstruction provides pain relief, improved stability, and increased activity level in patients with chronic ACL injury with minimal degenerative knees. Uh, it has been found to be associated with obvious complication, uh, with, with no obvious complication or failure, however long the period of follow-up needed. Uh, this is the abstract of this paper available to you in the uh, abstract book, and it has been accept accepted to be published soon, inshallah. I uh, would like to thank my mentor, Mr. Shah Mohamed for this good work. Uh, thank you. You mentioned that uh, in this patient is symptomatic by pain or instability. You're not going to do surgery. You consider pain an indication? Being written in the literature, I don't. No patient comes to me. Most of the patient come to me with chronic uh, BCL uh, injury with instability. This is the main. But being written in the literature, because sometimes definitely the pain may not uh, the AC, the BCL may not the cause of that pain. The patient may have muscular injury, may have a contral damage. So uh, I don't think really. It's been written, written in the literature, but really I don't think pain. You need to know if this pain really due to a BCL injury. BCL usually leads to an increased load in the uh, patellofemoral joint and a medial side. So if there is a load of pain mainly from the uh, anteromedial part and, and or on the medial side, I may think of the, uh, giving the patient a chance to do for him a BCL reconstruction. So the main cause is uh, now instability. instability. Yeah. If the patient has <coughs> pain, I think that uh, for these stresses you just yeah. mentioned, yeah. arthritis has already started. Yes. And whenever, uh, whenever ha uh, we have an uh, arthritic knee with ligament deficiency, we should think a hundred times for putting a scalpel in. Because our intervention might raise up the degree of arthritis. Uh, another comment for your talk. 
Any other questions, Dr. Jaffer? Okay, my, my comment is whenever you see the passing pin to do the TVL tunnel, whenever you see this from the anterolateral entry anti portal, I think uh, the exit of the TVL tunnel is not distal enough. Whenever I see it from the anteromedial or anterolateral portal, I switch my scope to the anteromedial, you've done it cleverly, and look, because I, I need at least two centimeters. I, I, know, I understand that the normal anatomy is one and a half centimeters, probably distal to the tibial uh, articular cartilage. But you need uh, some bone stock to guard against being a pulse the game. So if you got your passing pen in the articular cartilage or in the angle, so you don't have enough bone stock to resist that tremendous stress. Especially when you, you, you drink a little more will be. Yes. Thanks so much. Any other questions on Corona? Uh, uh, thank you. My, my question to Dr. Khalid uh, about the LC joint uh, pistons. Uh, the first question is Do you think the position of the patient and the direction of the X ray tube? will change the size of the AC joint, number one, number two, what's the clinical correlation of this? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. for raising these questions. Uh, the standardized way to investigate the AC joint uh, described by Zhang, they call, they're going to investigate like uh, 1,000 uh, cases uh, and develop uh, something we call it Zhang view. Uh, but all views they confirm to have an anterior posterior view with cephalic tilt of the cephalic tilt of uh, of the beam like uh, 15 degrees. This is going to increase or to decrease the superimposed of the scapula to the joint. But it's not change the chronoclavicular distance because as we know the chronoclavicular distance have an uh, disc articular disc between two parts describe a meniscal disc between two parts of a chronoclavicular joint because that the position is not considered as main part. As another question about the correlation, as we mentioned, uh, the right to compare right side and left side, uh, AC joint is a variable tool. Uh, in X-ray, we confirm that no significant difference between the right side and left side, and we confirm that the male will have more uh, wide space than female, and we confirm that also. Uh, and we confirm that also the age processing, the age processing will decrease the normal economic gravity of the space. And this can have a uh, I think the point uh, the Sharaf is, is trying to tell is the, these different types of uh, uh, ACL and chronic gravity joint morphology. Does it have any this sort of have any predictive value regarding symptomatology? Yeah. If you help me out, this type of joint is going to be more prone to uh, change it more than the other one. Yes, I got your question. As oblique, as I mentioned, oblique oblique type is the most one affected by osteoarthritis because the transmitted load, we have small joint space and we have small articular surface and the transmitted load will be very high. On the articular surface, is the, it will increase in the oblique part. Among the flat part and care part, or similar type flat, flat, care, care, and oblique, oblique will have less, uh, less osteoarthritis. But we didn't prove that by our study. We are studying the normal one. But that written in British. Oh, uh, the point is, uh, clinically, while you're resecting the AC joint scopically, that would be of great significance to know the configuration of the AC joint before you contemplate uh, and doing this. This is very good point and uh, valid, and I agree with you totally. But uh, I do not agree with you to the evaluation only by x ray. Uh, I totally agree with Professor Sharp for this. Because if the patient just tilted his shoulder like that, 10 degrees, you would find completely different results. The idea is great. Thank you very much for this. I've been trained with Professor Hirsch in Germany 2004. He was conducting a study like that among the German population was really significant and really uh, beneficial to know the, co the configuration of the AC joint before you resect it from the underside. But uh, I wish the next year, inshallah, will listen to you talking about this study evaluated by CT. Inshallah. So thank you very My much. My message is that the simple X-ray is how unbalanced. 
even the smallest diagnosing amount. Diagnosing pathologists. Yes. Not in determining the configuration. Yes, in diagnosing pathologists. Yes, in every diagnosing pathologist. Thank you. I think the, uh, this study, I think this is a very nice study. Uh, this it raises puts question marks. I think more st more studies uh, using more uh, other uh, uh, radiological uh, you know modalities, and then you have to use that uh, to see what is the clinical correlation of these findings to our uh, clinical setting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with you. We recommend also for further studies using CT and MRI and to correlate this with clinical symptoms. Thank you much, uh, One question to the paper of Prof. Schroeder. Anybody? Raise your hands, please. And another question for the two, pa for the two papers remaining. Chronic SCL dispatient seat management. Because I agree it's very much um, close to each other. Yes, please. Mike, please. Dr. Muhammad, did you encounter any kinking in your study? Any kinking or infection in your study? Yeah, I had one case of infection, yes. But it resolved within uh, two weeks. Okay. I have a very simple question to both of you. If there are no differences to be considered between early and late reconstruction of the ACL, so why should we hurry to reconstruct the ACL? Just put the patients on the waiting lists, six months, eight months, no difference. As mentioned earlier, in different uh, literature, the more you delay the operation, the more you have chondral damage and cause an unstable uh, knee. Chondral damage and meniscus. And this will not do any significant difference in the result? Of course, if you have more, yeah. more meniscal damage, as long as you're delaying surgery, this will not lead to any significant difference in the results in the early and late reconstruction. Uh, the later is a reconstruction, the baby still might have some sort of uh, pain, of course, following the control of meniscal injury. But at least a young, for, for example, a young patient of 17 or 20 years of so unstable uh, uh, knee. So I think the message is if the osteoarthritis, three cases of rheumatoid arthritis, and nine cases of severe deformity. Uh, we assist the outcome at one year using the American Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Society score, which focuses on three points the pain, function, and alignment. We measure the pre and post op uh, score. So, uh, concerning the patients who were used with screws, they were 36. The mean uh, score before 30 was 33, it grew to around.
from a uh, tertiary uh, unit, uh, specifically on plastic units here, so the surgeons and plastic surgeons work hand in hand in the right uh, just a reminder of the Castilla music classification. Um, I'll only talk about the three B um, uh, fractures in which there is significant uh, soft tissue loss and in which both coverage is not achievable and possible by direct uh, uh, and plastic intervention is needed. So, this is a consecutive case series of, of qualifications referred to our unit between August 2012 and August and January 2017. Uh, all of these patients were either initially operated on and deprived primarily at the initial hospital and received uh, a unit or they were referred to us. And cases were operated uh, in a designated orthoplastic list where an orthopedic surgeon and a plastic surgeon um, planned the case beforehand and uh, uh, put a plan with regards to the approach and the provision of soft tissue, different soft tissue as well as the skill utilization. <coughs> so we had a 12, uh, total of 12 patients. I know the numbers are low, but uh, these are some patients for being quite uh, unique to our injuries. The majority of the patients were males. Uh, we had three high foot uh, fractures in the form of open calcaneal fractures, and nine high foot uh, fractures being buried between uh, this fracture induced prolate types and this isolated with the constant fractures. The average age at presentation was 40 years, and the median time from the initial injury to the definitive reconstruction was approximately four days. So that's an example of um, a case that was uh, referred to as directly uh, later in the day in the 50s to um, attempted suicide, but then changed her mind at the last minute, sustaining that uh, injuries. Uh, as a result of her foot being hit by a train. So that's the initial picture when she first came in. These were her bony injuries. She has got, as you can see, a uh, medium value was on this case fracture, and a ligament fracture, basically the fifth of the tarsal fracture, a cuneiform fracture, a lateral cuneiform fracture, and an unstable second, third, and fourth tarsal of the tarsal joints. <coughs> That's another close-up. So this is the picture after the initial, the initial debridement uh, on the time of admission. You can clearly see the superficial perineal nerve running across the wound and exposed medial uh, tendons. So that's an intraoperative picture showing the bridging plate from the from the navicular to the base of the second and third. The lateral uniform after debridement basically there was nothing left. So we started using uh, tolerance bone graft mixed with a, uh, a compound with calcium sulfate as an osteoconductive um, mixed with gentamicin to deliver a high concentration of gentamicin uh, locally. And that's where it looks after the bone graft and the final fixation. And that's the postal picture. And that's after we have uh, plastic <coughs> soft tissue cover using an ultralateral five flap uh, connected to the posterior tibia. It's a free flap connected to the posterior tibial artery. So, autologous bone graft was used um, primarily for bone deep um, bone defects. And we started, like I said, using a compound called CERN-G. Um, in the last five cases, we have a um, high dose of products locally. So all cases um, achieved soft tissue uh, healing, the bony union, with the, except one patient that had failed uh, split skin graft healing revision. Uh, one patient developed post-trauma uh, osteoarthritis, needed more of metal work and missed uh, fusion. So out of the 12 patients, uh, two developed um, deep infection, for which um, the metal work needed to be removed, and one patient developed chronic uh, pain, which did not respond to all sorts of treatments and did not do the application. The five cases that had a certain year applied uh, to deliver a high concentration of uh, antibiotics did not develop any post-operative uh, infection. So 
This table just shows the type of salt tissue coverage that these patients have received. The majority of them receive three plaques in the form of an ALP or a boy, or a five plaque. Um, a couple of patients had uh, split skin graft, and a few of them had that exposure and possibly painted plaques. This is another case which uh, uh, sustained an open calcane infraction with a function of the calcane with the function of the Achilles tendon, function of the plantar fascia. That's another close up. That's after the split skin graft has been applied. That picture just shows the bone anchors used to be attached to the Achilles tendon and to repair this plantar fascia. That's just a video showing this patient's function, uh, which is high level. And it's his right foot. So, in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, uh, the role plastic approach to such three significant uh, <coughs> injuries uh, provides a satisfactory outcome. Um, we recommend the use of uh, antibody clothing bone thicker uh, fillers in order to enhance uh, bone filling and uh, reduce the risks of deep infection. I will refer to a specialist student that this with such an injury is recommended uh, in order to avoid unnecessary uh, amputation and even medical treatment. Thank you very much.
My justification in my limited knowledge of today, there is no publicity to study that initiated the program of strategic management of multiple shyness, including my patient trigger point release for gastrocnemius and plant operation. The objective of this study, general objective to study the effect of dry needling in the treatment of patients with chronic multiple shyness. And the specific objective to assess uh, dry needling effect in the pain and uh, determine the change in the range of motion in the antibiotic pressure and identify the alteration on function performance uh, after application of the dry needling. Uh, the study design is an experimental study uh, collected at the uh, University, Outpatient Clinic of Physiotherapy. Uh, the study preparation, the target preparation of the study, those have chronic lantern fasciitis, repair by auxiliary physician and oncology physician, as chronic lantern fasciitis and assessed by well test test. The inclusion criteria patient in age between uh, 25 to 30 years, the symptoms of pain uh, more than three months, with no history of physiotherapy for hip pain in the past months, patient with no food abnormalities, and patient no previous food surgery, and people who volunteer to participate in the system. Uh, the exit uh, criteria, patient who receive physiotherapy sessions, uh, patient taking muscle relaxant, and those uh, no permit to participate in the system. The sampling size, uh, the patient with chronic lantern fasciitis, uh, uh, 15 patients receiving dry needling and 15 as control group no treatment. The study instrument for evaluation, visual analog scale, two functional index, and angle motions. For treatment group A for needling, identify uh, first the patient trigger point, visualize the, patient, uh, the area of treatment, and then apply the needle. Uh, needling by changing the direction of needle and the depth of entering needle, remove the needle and check after treatment. First, identify the area of uh, trigger point, and then apply the needle. Uh, first is the last of the previous um, uh, calf muscle and the second is the plant patient. Group B is uh, the control group, has no treatment. Uh, is it a consider uh, consider uh, consideration? The remission before start the application of needle. Separation uh, is the method for patient and informed consent is spelled by patients. <coughs> Select suitable time for data collection and for application of trial. Uh, there was a significant difference reported between pre uh, and post uh, pass and functional performance in the trial needling group, whereas there, there was no significant difference between pre and post entry to selection range of motion. Uh, the result of current study was supported by finding of two sudden effectiveness of trigger point uh, dry needling for blunt or heat pain conducted by Maslow at all at two, uh, 2014, which was found there is an evidence effect in past for pain step and, and functional performance. This finding indicated that there was evidence effect of migration trigger point release by dry needling in pain reduction and functional but there is no effect in the low deflection range of motion. In control group, there was no statistical difference between pre and post measurement for fast and the low deflection and functional performance. As a uh, conclusion of this study, uh, the dry needling is effective to reduce and increase increasing functional performance of the patient with chronic lung fasciitis, but has no significant effect in the low deflection range. Thank you. Uh, the next is uh, a chart we supposed to talk about is plant fractures. The things that we check it out, they run away. The reason why the kids have none of <laughs> But I just want to show you the opportunity. For a long time for me since I did the report and I'm saying 
and most often these equinus deformities due to the natural action of the gravity of the ankle. So the natural tendency of the ankle is to go into equinus. <coughs> and not only this, uh, most of the patients that do require equine running it is around surgery. Uh, by, by, by nature, they do have more severe injuries. So you do expect more muscle injuries, nerve injuries and whatnot. So all this predisposes them to develop this kind of deformities. And we also know that uh, the muscle being static itself can induce hyperlipidemia. <coughs> The problem is that, I'm just going to address the obvious, but if you have an equinus contracture of any joint, I mean equinus is obviously the anchor, but if you have contractures of any joint, it is obviously going to be detrimental to your function. And what we developed is a very simple solution using simple devices, and the aim was to try to prevent this from happening in the first place. And for those of them who actually presented with already pre-existing equinus, trying to connect it with that interpretation as well. Now, this is basically what we have done. It's very inexpensive, but really available for all these uh, uh, surgeons. And the patients could actually choose, uh, choose the shoe of their liking to use with this thing. Now, this is a close-up of the rig that we use. As you can see, it's a very simple uh, device, just two treadle boards with some post and treadle cuts. And this is how we attach it to the frame, the proximal end of it. And the distal end of it is just this. Basically, it's just a U-shaped uh, frame uh, tied with ropes which are attached to the proximal segment earlier. And it's uh, connected to the shoe by a simple uh strap, which you can easily take it off if you want to walk on it. And this is the results of those who have uh, had this employment contracture to start with. And obviously it works. And what we do is that for patients who present a, a supple foot, a supple ankle, and the aim for the fixation is for prevention of employment, we apply this uh, system to them within the first week, uh, if possible immediately after the operation. And uh, we apply 